Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is World of Warships Legends. Today we're going to be taking our very first look at the Tier 6 Tech Tree Italian battleship. Let me try to get this right. Francesco Caracciolo. I'm sure I butchered it, and I apologize to my Italian viewers. I know you guys are out there. But, as you may know, if you were following my streams over the past month, the Caracciolo is not a ship I was able to obtain out of the early access crates. At least not until after my stream on Friday, when it occurred to me that I just happened to have 1,000 doubloons credited to my account, and at the time I did not know where the Italian access crates were located in the store due to my terrible potato-like inability to navigate basic menus. Once I figured out where they were, I was able to purchase one single early access Italian battleship crate, and what do you know, the Caracciolo just happened to pop out of said crate. So I was very excited about this, and I decided to take it out to see what uses could be made of this rolling smokescreen. And so this video is not really a review of this ship per se. I've only been able to play it a handful of times since I've been quite busy lately. But this is more like a proof of concept. And this is also not exactly the kind of game I usually want to show on my channel because it is a bit of a one-sided blowout. And there are some potato moments on the part of the enemy team that, you know, I think are worth highlighting, starting with this Synop out here. So you can see we are retreating from this cap just a little bit, trying to get some distance from this Synop and evaluating what we want to do. We've got a kiting Otago out there to the north of the Alpha Cap. He's spamming HE at us, and he is going to be kiting for the majority of this entire game, shooting HE at everybody and being generally ineffective. There is something to be said about building your cruisers for agility, so that you can dodge incoming fire from your enemies, and I assume that that is what the Otago has done. But if you constantly just kite around and spam HE willy-nilly throughout the entire game, don't focus on the objectives or anything, you're not going to end up being all that effective, and I think that's the story of the Otago there. But you can see the Otago is now sort of behind that island, and so is the Synop. We're turning hard to port right now because we want to get these islands between ourselves and the enemies to break their line of sight. And it looks like, given the Synop's position, he's not going to be able to shoot at us right now. And then we do drop spot, which is precisely what we wanted. Apparently we're going to try to take a pot shot at the Otago out there who's giving us broadside, but of course the island is right there to catch our shells, which is very, very nice. And Iowa out there in the distance at 17.3 kilometers has been shooting at us intermittently throughout this entire time, but he has been firing only high explosive, which of course leads me to not respect him too much as a threat. Maybe I should choose a different terminology on that. It's not like I don't respect the Iowa player as a person. I just don't think he's going to be the one who's going to end up sinking me in this game, if you know what I mean. Meanwhile, Otago just sailing around at the edge of the map border, kind of clipping him with some shells there, getting some lovely juicy overpens, which we like to see. But here is the sequence, well, one of two sequences that convinced me I wanted to show you this game as a proof of concept for the Caracciolo. My idea in this ship is to use the rolling smoke screen to get close enough to an enemy ship and then pop that smoke screen so that I'm concealed right now as I come around the island here next to the Synop. And then, once my secondaries start firing, use the enhanced secondaries consumable to buff their accuracy and their reload speed and all the good things that that consumable does. This is sort of what I envision as the Caracciolo's sort of ace calling card. Especially when the ship can't see you, they fire their guns and they're giving you flat broadside. Well, occasionally you can get lucky and smack them for three citadels. 
This is the kind of thing I think this ship is probably going to excel at. And of course, if you do pop this smoke screen, there are some downsides. Number one is you cannot escape this smoke screen while it's running. It's just going to follow your ship at full speed. So if you don't have vision of the enemies while you're inside of the smoke screen, well, things can get a little bit problematic, particularly if there's a radar cruiser nearby or a cruiser close enough to detect you with sonar. In such cases, you might be spotted inside of your smoke screen, but not be able to see the enemy shooting at you. So it is a bit of a double-edged sword in that respect, and you do have to be careful of it. Also, of course, you don't want to deploy your smoke screen until after the firing penalty that gets imposed on you when you fire your main guns has cooled off. And the way you can tell is by looking at the minimap. I'll direct your attention there real quick. You can see the orange circle intersecting with the white circle on the minimap. That is our spotting range. And since we fired our main guns, it extended all the way out to our firing range. But once the cooldown has been imposed, you can see it gets smaller that orange circle, now it's inside of our max firing range. That's when you can see that the firing penalty is no longer imposed on your ship. So if you pay attention to that, you can know when to deploy the smoke screen the most effectively. As for what's going on in this game, the enemy has lost three ships. We've got Otago and HE spamming Iowa out there, sort of retreating. We're maybe going to try to take a parting shot at them, but probably not really because they're not doing much of anything of value. The bigger concern is the Iowa over here and the Ganais now inside of the Bravo cap. These guys are actually heading for an objective and thus they are a threat to our ability to win. The Ganais now is taken out by the friendly Akatsuki and this enemy Iowa is giving me broadside. One thing that can be said about the Caracciolo's 15-inch guns is that they're not exactly the most accurate guns known to mankind. As you can see there, with that rather underwhelming salvo we sent at the Iowa, we do have his full attention now, and he reveals himself to be another HE spamming Iowa. I'm not sure what is going on, because this is a distinctly different Iowa from the one hugging the map border with the Otago who was firing high explosive at us earlier. At least I think it is. It's just a little bit weird that you get two Iowas in the same game shooting HE, especially when the Iowa's 16-inch guns can overmatch the bow plating of the Caracciolo, so really no reason for the Iowas to be shooting HE at me. But if they're going to do it, then I'm not going to complain. Never complain when the enemy is making a mistake. I think that is the formulation of some wise words delivered to us by probably the mighty jingles. I have no idea. Anyway, the Iowa continues to shoot me with HE, lights me on fire twice. You can see we have the smoke screen up. We are not under the smoke firing penalty, so we are able to deploy that smoke screen and go dark and also deploy the secondary consumable. And you can see these secondaries are monstrous. They're hitting that Iowa for over a thousand damage each time. In some cases, even more than that, two or three thousand. Of course, we lose spot of the Iowa and we have no way of regaining that since we're inside of our own smoke screen. We need our teammates to regain vision on that Iowa for us. Are they going to do it? Well, I guess they did, and the Iowa is presenting flat broadside. We've still got a little bit of time left on our smoke screen, so we're just going to let that hang. And then we're going to shoot at the Iowa after we realize he shot his own guns and can't fire at us for the next 30 seconds. So he's continuing to hold his position steadily. Our secondaries are chipping away at him. You can see that the damage numbers have gone down slightly into the 600 range, although there's a nasty 2500 salvo. I think that may be because the Iowa's superstructure is damage saturated at this point, so maybe that's why the secondaries aren't doing as much damage. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think in the comments. In any case, that Iowa is dead, and that just leaves the Otago, who has been playing the 
kiting agile cruiser game for the entirety of this match. You can see it hasn't really generated him any sort of success. He's just kind of out there on the map border shooting high explosive at me. We're going to return fire to him a couple times, chip away at his hit points as this game winds down, and net ourselves the high caliber metal. It is a little bit difficult to hit this guy. You can see his rudder shift is extremely fast indeed, and he's able to change directions with an alarming amount of agility, which certainly does make him more difficult to hit, but I'm not sure he was actually using his time as effectively as he could in that particular cruiser. I don't want to harp on him too much or pick on him all that much either. There is value to be found in the agile cruiser builds but not if you're gonna play the cruiser on the border like this that being said maybe there's nothing else this guy could do because his team just sort of collapsed around him i don't know in any case the caracciolo is a fantastic ship very unique amongst battleships and i know i said this wouldn't be a reveal but i want to wrap up by giving you my thoughts on it I think this rolling smoke screen, oh, and thank you, Mr. Destroyer, for laying a smoke screen of your own for my benefit, even though it's really not going to do anything because I'm not going to stop shooting at this Otago. There's the high caliber. Anyway, this rolling smoke screen certainly gives this ship a unique flavor compared to other battleships, and I think it can synergize very, very well indeed with these excellent sap secondaries. The only downside, of course, is that this is a Tier 6 battleship, so it's not super heavily armored, but I assume the Tier 7 battleship will be heavily armored indeed, mm -hmm. and it should be able to make even better use of this smokescreen secondary combo than the Caracciolo can. Anyway, let me know what you think of this ship in the comments and my thoughts on it. Give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already, and then with that, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.